Having said that, the best and most important financial goal that will bring you the most happiness and joy is... My name is Dave Moss, I'm here to educate and inspire you to make the most of your money, to live generously and impact the world beyond just yourselves. Let's get straight into it with the most common financial goals that YouTubers will have for you this time of year. Get out of debt, buy a house, get an emergency fund, start investing, become financially free. These are all great goals, but why are they also really bad goals? Well, they don't take into account your personal situation. You might not have any debt, or you might not want to be debt free because you want to, like me, use mortgages as a key strategy in your plan to get financially independent. It may be that you absolutely love your job and therefore you maybe don't mind spending a little bit less on that financial freedom goal and spend more of it on having experiences now, maybe buying a camper van so that you and the family can go off on trips every other weekend on adventures. These are average, generic goals. Ask yourself the question, do you want to be average and generic? Now the answer to this question depends on a couple of things. When I was a teacher, whenever there was a class test, the students would always ask me, Sir, what's the average? And I stopped telling them, I refused to tell them what the average for the class was, because it is a useless piece of information. The only two bits of information that they have are their score and the average score, and the sole purpose of that average score is so that they can compare themselves to the rest of the class. Well, why is that such a bad thing? Well, what if the average of the class was 36% and you got 34%? Does that mean that you've almost hit the average and that's a good thing? Or does it mean there's actually still 66% of stuff that you don't know? Or if the class average is 94% and you get 78%, but you usually get 36% in your test, then is that a good thing? Does that mean you've done badly because you've not measured up to the rest of the class? When evaluating a situation, the most important thing is to collect all of the information together. Where have you been? Where are you now? And where are you going? And the average doesn't feature in that. The thing that this class test snapshot does is shows you where you are and where you need to go next. Ask yourself again, do you want to be average? When you're comparing yourself financially, it is so easy to look around you and start thinking, oh, how do I measure up to these other people? How does my lifestyle compare to these other people? But that's not the most important question. A wise man once said, Comparison is a contentment killer. When making your financial goals for 2022, go through the whole process, get a complete picture. Where are you now? What do you want to achieve? And how are you gonna get there? Make it personal to you. Don't let other people impose their financial goals on you, even financial YouTubers. Start by assessing where you are right now. Ask yourself questions like, how much debt do I have? Am I earning more than I'm spending? What assets do I have? Am I gonna start a side hustle? Starting a YouTube channel. What percentage of my income am I currently investing? So now that you know where you are, it's time to make a plan for 2022. The most important part of any financial plan is that it moves you in the right direction. If you've got no emergency fund right now, then building up a month's worth of cash on hand is possibly a good idea. If you've already got a month's worth of cash on hand, then three to six months of expenses saved up in somewhere where you're not gonna spend it is the next step. If you've already got that, how about thinking about a year to two years worth of expenses? If you've already got two years of cash on hand, then what about a small holding bunker somewhere in Scotland? If you've already got your small holding bunker somewhere in Scotland, congratulations, you win. If you haven't got any rental properties, how about making a goal to get a rental property? If you've already got seven rental properties, then what about making a goal to get 10? You get the picture, you're going in the right direction. Get excited about making progress because making progress will always make your life better. Having said that, the best and most important financial goal that will bring you the most happiness and joy is... Be content with what you have. I've said it a load of times on this channel already. Although I am all for improving your situation, giving yourself options, building a life that you don't want to retire from, contentment with what you have is the only thing that will get you off this constant, never-ending desire for more and more. My financial goals for 2022 won't be about hitting a certain percentage saving rate or hitting a certain net worth. It's all about making progress in building the life that I don't want to retire from. How can I use the money that I have to improve relationships with the people that I value? How can I use my money to get more quality time with my family? How can I use my money to make more connections with those around me? How can I spend my money on creating shared experiences with my friends that deepen that level of friendship? 
Should I be buying some more surfboards so that when people come and visit for the weekend, we can all go surfing? Or shall I buy some guitars and amps so that I can have people around and just enjoy making music together? How can I spend my money to free up the time to do the things that I want to do and serve the people that I want to serve? The hardest part of making a financial goal is knowing what you want. Not what advertisers say that you want or what TikTokers and YouTubers make you feel that you want. What do you want? Whatever you do, make sure you make progress in building a life that you don't want to retire from. How about you? What are your financial goals for 2022? Are any of them spending goals? Let's get a chat going in the comment section down below. If you want to know more about building a life that you don't want to retire from, then you can check out that video right there, there and there. If you have made it this far into the video, I'd love it if you could hit the little subscribe button so you get to see more content on how you're going to build a life that you don't want to retire from. And don't forget to use my links if you want to start your investing journey there in the description. Thanks very much and peace out and see you soon.